from our mouth to your hearts, Deron and I, or Q and I, depending on who's posting, never quit 112 nor our fans. This is a fabricated lie and it is not our narrative. In due time, you will receive the true narrative. Until then, we love you and thank you again for the continued support. You're probably wondering how 112 got to this scenario, but before we reach that part, you're probably wondering who 112 even is. Well, 112 is an R&B group from Atlanta. In the late 90s, they signed with Puff Daddy's Bad Boy Entertainment and recorded anthems like Cupid, Anywhere, and Peaches and Cream. Today, I want to go through the journey of 112 and get a status on what the group is up to today. So without further ado, this is what happened to 112. Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. The story of 112 began with Deron Jones and Michael Keefe. The duo attended Walter F. George High School where they linked up with Reginald Finley. The three students accepted an assignment to perform at a school function. After this function, three added Alden Landon after discovering him at a McDonald's. They brought him in because he had a deep voice. They added one more member, a high tenor nerdling named Marvin Skandrick. He was added because he had a very distinct voice. The name of the group was Forte, which stood for Forever to Excellence. They would link up with manager Kevin Wales, who had connections in the R&B industry. He got them record a demo with Atlanta producers Tenem and Bob, and their goal was to get their demo shipped to Dallas Austin's label, Rowdy Records. But Wales instead shipped the demo all the way to New York because he had connections with Sean Puffy Combs, the guy who's all in the video, all on the record, dancing. Puff liked what he heard on tape as he was looking for another male R&B group to groom since his works with Jodeci. But he wanted to hear it in person, so he arranged the guys to audition at Buckhead 112 Club. But there was a dilemma. First, Alden and Reginald left the group since they were upperclassmen and the rest of the members were underclassmen. I assume they left to pursue higher education. Those two were replaced by Quinez Q. Parker, who also attended Walter F. George High School. Second, on the night of their audition, they were unable to enter the club because of their ages. So they auditioned outside of the club and Puff was impressed. Puff wasn't sure what to do with the guys, but after getting co-signs from Kim Porter, Faith Evans, and Usher, Puff was convinced to sign them to Bad Boy. Puff then changed the group name from Forte to 112 after the ninth club they auditioned for. In 1995, 112 made their first appearance on the Money Train soundtrack recording the song Making Love. The next year, they released their official debut single, Only You, featuring the Notorious B.I.G., and a later remix featured Mace in his debut. The song peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 3 on the R&B charts. In August 1996, 112 released their self-titled debut album. Their next single was Come See Me, and that peaked at number 33 on the Billboard Hot 100. But their third single would be synonymous with 112, a song called Cupid. Cupid would peak at number 13 on the Hot 100 and number 2 on the R&B charts as the album would go double platinum. To promote, they went on various tours opening for the Isley Brothers, Keith Sweat, New Edition, and Puff Daddy and the Family. On March 9, 1997, their label mate, the Notorious B.I.G., was killed in a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles. Days earlier, the group was at the Soul Train Awards, presenting a award with him, where Big eerily said, What's up, Cali? According to Slim, he compared Big to a Big Brother, as they appeared twice on Big's second album, Life After Death. After Biggie's death, Puff approached the boys and Faith Evans to work on a tribute song called I'll Be Missing You. The song would become the first rap song to debut at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and gave the boys their only Grammy win for best rap performance by a duo or group. In October 1998, they released their second album, Room 112. Their lead off single was Love Me, which used the Luther Vandross Do You Know That sample. Love Me peaked at number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 8 on the R&B charts. The next song was Anywhere featuring Lil Zane. Produced by Deron, the song peaked at number 15 and number 5 
on the Hot 100 and R&B charts respectively as the album once again went double platinum. To promote, they opened up for Whitney Houston on her My Love Is Your Love tour. As they tried to work on their third album, they couldn't get guidance from Puffy like they did with their first two. Puff's hands were tied into the court case where he faced a serious gun charge. So to avoid distractions, 112 briefly relocated to Nashville to work on part three. Part three was released on March 2001. The lead single was It's Over Now, which sampled Mob Deep's Quiet Storm. The song became the boys' first top 10 Billboard hit as a lead artist and landed at number one on the R&B charts. In 2015, Ellie Golden sampled the song on her album Delirium. The next song was Peaches and Cream and that song became the highest charting song for 112, peaking at number four on the Hot 100 and at number two on the R&B charts. Peaches and Cream will be nominated for Best R&B Performance by a Duo or Group at the 2002 Grammys, losing to Destiny's Child. The third single was Dance With Me, and that song peaked in the top 10 in various countries despite a disappointing showing on the Hot 100. Part 3 would go platinum as they opened for Janet Jackson on her All For You tour. In February 2002, 112 announced their break from Bad Boy. Sources differ on why the group split from Bad Boy. One reason was the lack of interest among both parties. According to Mike, 112 was trying to get out a production deal in order to get out of Bad Boy. Q stated that the deal they had was bad and knew 112 deserved better. Whatever the case was, Diddy was not going to make 112 departures from Bad Boy easy. 112 negotiated a deal with Def Jam that gave them fair compensation and creative control. But Diddy initially blocked the move from happening, but both parties settled with the agreement both labels to promote 112 next album. 112 recorded majority of that project in Daddy's house, aka Diddy's studio. Their first album was called Hot and Wet. The group released two singles, Na 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 with Supercat and Hot and Wet with Ludacris, but neither single made major impact on the charts, thus the album was deemed a disappointment. In 2005, they released Pleasure and Pain. The album was named after a track from their debut album. The album was headlined by the lead single, You Already Know. The song peaked at number 32 on the Hot 100 and number 3 on the R&B charts. Thanks to the song, the album went gold. They released one other single, What If, but it failed to crack the Hot 100. After Pleasure and Pain, things take an odd turn for 112. The guys separated to focus on solo endeavors, and because of this, Def Jam dropped them from their label. Michael Keefe dropped his solo project in 2008. Mike then came out and said that he, alongside Slim, were getting ripped off from their money. He didn't mention any names, but it was assumed that Q and Deron had their hands in the pot too much. However, Slim denied any money troubles amongst the members. Speaking of Slim, he released a solo album in 2008 called Love's Crazy. It was headlined by the song So Fly with Young Jock, which became a top 10 R&B hit. Deron released his solo album Uncensored in 2010. Then in promotion with his 12 month fitness calendar, Q released his solo debut called The Manual in 2012. By 2012, all the members reconciled and started to tour again. In 2015, the boys appeared on the Bad Boy Reunion performance at the 2015 BET Awards and were later going on tour with Bad Boy. In 2017, they released their first album in a decade called Q Mike Slim Duran. But the next year, 112 split up again. Upon dealing with this news, Slim decided to go all in on what caused the split. To paraphrase in a since deleted Instagram post, Slim emphasized that he's part of a brand that lasted two decades and never abandoned it. He also stated that the same members that caused the split in 2006 is added again. The split will become even more public when 112 did a versus battle with Jagged Edge in 2020. For legal reasons, Q and Deron did not appear, both making statements saying, Dear 112 fans, thank you for the outpouring love and support. It is incredible and we appreciate how much of your heart and souls you have poured into our careers. 
We are simply blown away by the passion you have for our music, but unfortunately, we will not be participating in the upcoming verses with Jagged Edge due to an ongoing legal issue that is not settled. They both added, From our mouth to your hearts, Deron and I, or Q and I depending on who's posting, never quit 112 nor our fans. This is a fabricated lie and it is not our narrative. In due time, you will receive the true narrative. Until then, we love you and thank you again for the continued support. The legal issue involved who has the rights to the 112 name. Q and Deron sued Mike and Slim because they believe they tried to trademark the name without notice. Slim countered with a lawsuit stating Q and Deron tried to use 112 Lightning to promote their music. As of 2023, this suit is still ongoing. For now, Mike and Slim forged on as 112. Mike also reiterated that he would not allow Deron or Q back in the group since they left the brand twice. In 2020, the Forever EP was released. They also hired two dancers to fill in when they go on tour. While they get their legal problems resolved, Q continued to work on solo songs while Deron was doing the same, but also lent his pen to production. He got credits not only for 112, but with the Isley Brothers, New Edition, Total, Pink, Usher, Keisha Cole, and others. Maybe there'll be a day where Q and Deron and Mike and Slim will come together and resolve their issues and give the fans what they want because we all know that 112 are better together than apart. And on that note, that concludes what happened to 112. Tell me what y'all think in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.